once you receive the revival, you will be like COVID. You will get it sooner or later. That's it. And they will refer this to the uh, Asbury revival. This is the third great awakening. God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour out his spirit on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring where we contend for that promised outpouring, we equip for that promised outpouring, so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us a very special guest, Dr. Hong Tu Liao from Malaysia. God sent him to Asbury University to pray and to pray in the move of God that is happening there now. It is going to be an interview you will not want to miss. Thank you so much for joining us today on this podcast. This is one that you're going to want to listen to and learn of the heart of a man that God used in a mighty way in this outpouring. But before we get started, we want to encourage you to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net. This is an opportunity for you to see what else we have on our podcast player and to uh, to see the events that we have coming up because God is pouring out his spirit right here in our headquarters at Global Outpouring. And we have events that you may want to be here for. Some, some of them we'll be able to stream. Some of them we won't. So do check our events and Get where you can be tuned in or come here. It's going to be a glorious time as God is pouring out his spirit in this place. So we have with us today um, a man that I believe we're going to be friends with in, in time to come. We're, we're believing God for eternal relationships as he pours out his spirit on all flesh. And this is Dr. Hong Tu Liao from Malaysia. He he has been a professor at the Malaysia Bible Seminary, and God spoke to him in a powerful way. We want to hear his story. So welcome, Dr. Liao. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is the first one, the first interview. I have a few. There are people have, have asked already. Wonderful. Well, one. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, the first thank one. you, Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> When Philip and I arrived on day nine, mm-hmm. we got in about 930 at night. Mm-hmm. And by that time, they were just worshiping. You know, there weren't any testimony times. It was just worship, worship. And they were singing that uh, that Michael W. Smith song, Agnus Dei, where, where they were just going, holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Oh. And, they, and that worthy is the lamb. And then they go, you are holy. And it, just, it went on for for probably an hour or so, 45 minutes to an hour at least. Wow. It's powerful. And, and it was wow. powerful. And I, I just, I made a little video clip of about 23 seconds of it. And I sent it to several people. One of the people I sent it to was mm-hmm. Sampat Kumar mm-hmm. and it, from India. And, and he wrote back and told me about you. Right. And, right. and right. I asked someone about you. I, I would have loved to have connected with you there. But the lady said, you know, I think I know who you're talking about. It's it's a man that walked through the streets with with sandwich signs on. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So um, let's let's go back to the very beginning. Um, You are a theologian and you Mm -hmm. were a a professor. Yeah, I well, I wouldn't say I I, I am a theologian, but I would say I'm a professor in a Bible seminary, Malaysia Bible Seminary, right? There we go. Okay. So first of all, you came to Asbury as, what was your position there when you came? Uh, Visiting scholar. Visiting scholar. What does that mean? Well, uh, the seminary, SV Seminary has given the opportunity to like pastors or professors, uh, I mean, from all over the country, I mean, all over the world. Where they they have like a sabbatical or a, uh, they will come over to uh, Asbury Seminary, uh, free of charge, free. We will go there, do our research. It's just like they are giving you free, just you know, just relax and do whatever you want. So it's given to I mean, pastors or, or professors. So they are very kind. So yeah, I applied. Twenty fifteen, I applied. 
uh, I applied. Uh, the reason, because one of my uh, church members uh, uh, who did a PhD in Old Testament, he was there and he asked me, hey, pastor, on your sabbatical, do you want to come to uh, Asbury Seminary? I, at first I hesitated, but later I, uh, I decided to go. So on my sabbatical from uh, Malaysia Bible Seminary. So uh, as a visiting scholar, they call it, uh, I was there to write my uh, Sunday school books. So yeah, that was uh, from uh, August uh, 2015 to uh, June uh, 2016. It's about 10 months in Asbury Seminary. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Was, was it at that time that you had the dream? Yes. I had a dream on uh, 2016, February 21st. That was yesterday. Yesterday was the seventh anniversary. Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> oh. How beautiful. How beautiful. Yeah. So tell us about the dream. What was the dream? Well, in a dream, I was uh, driving in a car, uh, going to a prayer meeting. And at first I thought, you know, going to a prayer meeting, normally there aren't that many people, you know, like, the most 20, you know, normally you go to a normal prayer meeting, this where few people show up. So, but after that thought, I uh, I was taken into a, like a, a chapel, a big building. So I, I was taken there and suddenly I, I said, watch, you know, I, I heard on my right side, there were people like in the revival, they were like uh, uh, crying, praying, uh, you know, things like that. I, I heard the sound. You can sense it, you know, because I've been studying the revival for many years already. So I know what it's like in a revival. And then I heard what they were, I, the voice, I mean, the, but did I, I didn't hear, I mean, the wording. I didn't know whether it's English, Chinese, what, what language they are saying. And I, I cannot look at the people. I was like this. I cannot turn. I only can see the people on my like right side. I see people like praising uh, repentance like that, you know. I can hear it. And in my spirit, I said, revival. Mm -hmm. Revival. And then I woke up. Wow. Ah. I, I look it, at that moment, I look at the seat like a it, it looks like a chapel. You know, it, it, it's it's in a build, big building, it's like a chapel. So I look it up, it, it was like chapel setting. I can I can see it, you know. But I don't I don't look at exactly the whole thing. So that was in me. I, I this is a dream. You know? And I woke up, I told my wife about it. And I normally, because I, I was a very conservative uh, uh, Christian, I don't believe in dreams and visions. I taught in seminary, I preach against it. I, I tell people, hey, what, <laughs> what's your vision? Come on, read the Bible, because I'm, I'm, I'm with the Reformed tradition. You know, Reformed tradition, don't look at dreams and visions. Only, only the Word of God, they it. you dream every day, what, how do you discern? You know what I mean? So I was <laughs> against it, actually, but the dream came to me, uh, and then it didn't go away for not a few days maybe a couple of weeks at, at first it was a few days i was like come on what's going on why, why this dream just keep thinking mm. so I, I have to make a decision what whether this is really from god because i for me my wife know already i told her all kinds of i dream a lot every day but i never mm. believe in it i i just just take it as it is yeah so that was my it, very short dream it was like 20 seconds or so yeah wow and then what happened? So I pray and I, I ask for, I mean, you know, we have to test the dream, right? This is what I, you know, was, you know, okay. Now I got, I ask God, I have to test the dream. You have to confirm with other people. Okay. So first I, I went to, to two uh, respected professor. I don't even know that Dr. Robert Coma. Now he's uh, 19, uh, 90 plus already. I mean, he, he's, he's living in Wilmore. I, in fact, I, I met, I saw him a few days ago. So he was my professor back in uh, 1990, back in Trinity, where he was my professor evangelism. So I, I went to talk to him about it and say, uh, I shared the dream. And, he, and then he just, God may use you to start a revival in America or in Malaysia. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was trying to struggle with the dream, you know, we said true. He said, and then the other one, you know, the other is uh, Dr. Craig Keener. I don't know if you know, he's uh, now a professor in uh, Asbury. He's a very well-known New Testament professor. I, I went to his house a couple of times and I, I talked to him. I say, hey, I call him Craig. Craig, what do you think of my dream? What Do I take it seriously? And they look at me, you should. So with these two professors, you know, so I, okay, you, I got you. 
And then later I, I tested, I said, okay, you have to show me some student in this seminary where they have this kind of dreams of vision. And like in, I don't know, in like less than two weeks, I heard about uh, a few, or maybe five or six people talking about it. And when they, when they talk about their dreams and vision, they were like a year ago or many years ago. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, wow, they got it earlier than me. I thought I was the one who get it. You know what I mean? Like, wow, these people, they got it. Oh, oh, I'm like a later edition. <laughs> At first, I, was, I thought that I was the only one that I got it. You know, you know, so many people got it already. So I said, wow. okay, come on. Okay, I got, I got it. Okay, I, I got it. So I, 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 I obey. I, okay, I accept it stream. I, I believe it is from God. Now what? What, what should I do? So with a dream, and then you know what? Because God is God's timing is perfect. I love praying. I love praying, you know. But you need to have praying like crazy in order to you know to see the dream realized. So in March or April, uh, 2016 is uh, after one or two months after the dream, I received the gift of prayer. It's like baptism of the Holy Spirit, where I pray like crazy. I I pray hours a day and with joyful heart. I mean, in the past, we pray because we are obligated to do it because we we, we need to give example. <laughs> Let me, for, you know, I'm a professor. I need to show uh, example of praying, you know. But there was in the past. But when I received the gift of prayer, this is Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. You pray like crazy, nonstop. My wife can testify. It went so I, I left Asbury and went on to Malaysia. I thought it will, will go away. I went, it went on for months. I got up very early in the morning, 2 o'clock, 2.30. The, I, I went to bed like 12 and got up 2.30 and started praising God in the night. <laughs> 3 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock. It went on for months in Malaysia when I went back. So it, there was come with the, you know, the, uh, the, I mean, the, the gift of praying. So, uh, yeah, so I started praying and asking God, and God asked me to have to pray three hours a day. You know why? It's hard to pray three hours a day when you are a full-time professor in a seminary. Wow, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm dean of student. You know, in dean of student, where you are like a pastor to the student. You, have to, you are like pastor. Dean of student is very busy, you know. You have to take care of, you know, the student, you know, and I'm teaching uh, full-time, you know. So I have to pray three hours daily after this experience. You have to pray three hours, and... And I said, how can I pray three hours? I don't have that much prayer. I can pray for an hour, but three hours is too long. God says, I will give you my prayer item. Oh, okay. Then I said, if you don't give me a prayer item, then I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I try every day to, to pray three hours. Say, well, I'm still a full-time professor in, Malay in Malaysia Bible Seminary. <laughs> yeah. So God, give me the gift of a prayer. It's where I can spend a lot of time praying into it. Beautiful. I pray yeah. since you know since I got the dream, I pray until now. I mean, it's like seven years ago. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that is tremendous. So then, what happened that brought you back to Asbury? So uh, because we have a, a very good experience with the seminary. You know what? When I first came, uh, August uh, two thousand fifteen, I was told by a, a seminary student that daily Eucharist every day. Hmm. I said, "What? Every day?" Hmm. Huh. From Monday through Friday, every day. So I started to attend because I'm here on my sabbatical so I can enjoy my life day, you know. So I, <laughs> every, every singer, every singer, uh, when I'm in town, in Wilmore, I will attend. This was my favorite spot, you know, attending the uh, uh, daily Eucharist, you know, one in the chapel and the other four is in the in, in regular time. So I went. I had, uh, wow, I just, I just, well, it's like, have honeymoon with God, you know, during those periods. So I have very good experience. I felt God right here. I can, well, you can feel God everywhere, but Asbury is the place where you experience God even closer. So mm -hmm. we went back on, uh, on uh, June uh, 2016, and then we came back again uh, 2017, uh, the end of the year. There was our school like seven weeks uh, uh, break. So my wife and I, we came back again. I want to ask God to show me more. And then during that period, uh, I was wow. seeking God and I seeking God. And uh, I believe it's uh, December. I have to look at my diary. You know, over the past few years, I've been writing diary almost every day. What God has spoken to me. So uh, I, I believe in uh, uh, maybe 15 or in, in the middle of uh, December, 
2017, I felt God was speaking to me. You have to come back here to pray for revival, for the dream that God gave you. Pray for revival. Mm. So I told my wife, huh? Is that a job called praying for revival? <laughs> I never heard about it. Wow. <laughs> so I, you know, and then and, and we, we went back 2018. Uh, so we will, I talked to my wife. This is the, the, the assignment that God wants me to go back. You know, I was having my good time in uh, Malaysia Bible Seminary. I enjoyed so much. I taught there. I served there 14 years. And I hate holidays. I don't like holidays when I serve in seminary. I just hate holidays. I just like to be with the student, everyone. On the, in, in. <laughs> so now, I, you know, I enjoy so much. I enjoy my life. I thought I will, I will retire from my seminary. You know, I was, at the time I, I resigned, I was only 52. Yeah, I look mm. like 75, but I'm very young. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. Somebody told me that I'm 75, but I said when they told me I'm 75, I said no, I'm 55. <laughs> I'm 20 <laughs> years younger. So, <laughs> I, so I, I, I was going to retire, you know, after 70, you know, uh, from Malaysia Bible, but say God, no, you get out. You have to retire here from here. I said, huh? What? So I, I spoke with my wife and pray about it, and we decided, like you know, a few months later, I, I said, ask for one, one sign. If you give me a green card, then I'll come. I cannot come oh. here. I cannot, I'm not American. You know, I, I'm Malaysian. I can, cannot come here on my visa. You know what I mean? So, but God has his plan. You know, 30 years mm. ago, when we were in Trinity, my daughter was born there. So she's American. So she mm. came back uh, to study in the USD and then she got uh, a job. And then, so we asked her to apply for visa. I mean, for a green card. So there was a one sign I asked. If you give me a green card, then I'll come. <laughs> so wow. before the green card, I have to make a decision. I resign. With with green card is still in the process. It took about eighteen months. Normally, it, it would it would take about nine months or to one hour, one a year. But that was a longer. So I quit and I have no job. I stay in Malaysia. I I, wow. you know, I sold my car, everything. You know, I I prepared to come to US with the expectation that I will green, got a green card in twenty. Uh, 19 January, but I didn't get it until September. So it was like wow. nice wait in Malaysia with no job, no car, no place to stay. So we had to move like 20, you know, because in uh, in order to save money, because I don't have money, I have no income. So I have to move around. I think that time we moved around like 20 times, you know. Oh my. <laughs> carry the, the luggage every way, we, you know. The reason is because we didn't have money to pay. So we had to try to find where they can give us, you know, free of charge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, money, no, no, enough money to, to even. So anyway, we waited and then I, I got the green card uh, 2019 September. So there was a time I came. I came first and then my, my wife came two months later. So God give me the green card. So I have to obey. I have no yeah. choice. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah, so yeah. you got to Asbury and then you were working. It was your job to pray, right? Yes. That's yes. that's what God gave you was a job yes. to pray. And I've heard you say that you had an income. You you were paid for teaching, but yeah. you weren't paid for praying. But God took care of you. Yes, that's what I that's what I got promised from Jesus. You know, I said, well, people will appreciate me praying for them. Even I told the president uh, seminary, he said, oh, I came to pray for revival. You know, I, I spoke to him a couple of times. People ask me, because when you are in seminary, whether you are a student, you are a professor, you are staff, you know what I mean? Every, I go to cafeteria to eat at lunch uh, almost every day. People ask me, hey, how, how are you? What are you doing here? Are you a student? No. Are you a professor? No. Are you? Are you? What are you? I'm here to pray for revival. You know what? When people heard about it, I don't know how they feel. I don't know what they think of me. I whether they think of me crazy or whatever. But I have to tell them straight. I came here to pray for revival. They saw they saw me walking around like doing nothing, you know, walking around. Just well, I walk and pray, but it's like walking around. If you see that guy <laughs> walking around, he's praying, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I, I God, you know, Jesus promised, trust on me. Look at me. Look at me. I will provide. He said, "I'm." Mm -hmm. So I came. Actually, when I decided to come to America, God asked me not to join any mission organization. You are on your own. Mm -hmm. So I, it was a bit tough, you know, because I cannot raise any fund. 
because mm -hmm. many churches, you know, I mean, they have like, what, what organization are you with? I say, I'm alone. They will say, oh, thank you very much. We have policies where, you know, you have to have like a connection. Oh, oh wow. I, I struggling. I say, hey, Jesus, I say, hey, Jesus, what should I, how should I raise my fund? You know, I, at least I have to have something. I don't have to have enough. You know, I don't have to like raise, I have to spend like, I don't know how much, uh, just for me and my wife, we just two of you, we stay in Wilmore. It will cost us like uh, three thousand US for the I mean for two of us, and you know three thousand US is like thirteen thousand or fourteen thousand Malaysian ringgit. Wow! Who is going to spend this money for you? And one pastor wow. asked, me, "Hey, pastor, why do you pray for revival in Malay in in US? Why not pray in Mal Malaysia?" I well, I've been doing that for many years, but God asked me to go there. You, you think what you want? I want to do that, you know, because the, the living cost is so high. One American dollar is equal to four plus U, Malaysian ringgit. So I, Jesus, I, you know, I I cannot raise funds. I found on our own. It will be like zero. So I I talk. I, I spoke to uh, some churches, and one big sponsor is from Hong Kong House Church, uh, and then the other churches are from Malaysia. Mm. So Jesus asked me to go to uh, the churches that they trust me the most because I've been in Malaysia serving twenty five years. So the people know me. I'm an honest guy. I, you know, I'm you know you know I have a good reputation back in Malaysia. So some of my friends, good friends, uh, they know me for thirty years. You know, they they support even without mission organization. So I got like support maybe like eighty of my expenses, and then twenty percent have the trust on Jesus to provide every yeah. month. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, they, there's a there's a cost to obedience, right. but there's a higher cost to disobedience. Right. <laughs> yeah. And and so, you know, obedience, right. you have to step out on the waters like Peter did. Right. 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 That, right. That's that's what that's what God does. So uh, knowing that you're from Malaysia, Malaysia is tropical. It's how close are you to the equator there? Very close. Right. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the closest. Yeah, it's very hot in Malaysia. It's very hot. So you came here to uh, to Asbury, to Wilmore, Kentucky, and uh, you were having to pray. You're walking around praying, and you're w probably praying some in your house, praying here, praying there. Right. But what happened in the winter? Well, in the winter, you know, when when I pray, I without king the sign, I mean, I can pray everywhere. But the Lord spoke to me clearly uh, uh, 2020 June. It was the end of 2020 June. And, and I, I felt in the spirit uh, when I, I was praying back in my backyard uh, house. And Jesus spoke to me, get uh, the cardboard and write the, the message I wanted we you to carry. I was so excited. I said, oh, oh yes, yes. You know, that, during the pandemic, people like when you are walking on the street, they were like, Try to shine away from you. I said, "Come on, I cannot stand." You know, I want to preach the gospel. I want to tell people when they're <laughs> six feet away. I mean, I mean, not necessarily twenty feet away. You know, they saw you coming, they will zoom the way. You know, everybody's like that. So I was mm -hmm. like, in my spirit, I told my wife and my daughter, I said, "We really got to give me a microphone. You got to buy a, a, a mic for me or a speaker. I'm gonna go on the street, on the corner of the street. I'm gonna preach the gospel so that they can hear me." And then, but Jesus said, "No, no, no, you don't do that." And then you ask me to put on a sign and say, repent and believe in Jesus for the kingdom of God. So I put on, you know, I wrote it down and put it on, the on, on, my, you know, on my neck, you know, in front. Then I'll go out and, you know, on the street every day. But during the, when the winter come, you know, on like 20, 2020, uh, winter comes, I was like, you know, because uh, by the way, I, uh, in uh, 2020, the end of uh, uh, January, I felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me fast. Fast mm. a meal a day. Fast a meal a day. So something is coming. You need to fast so that you can see it clearly. You know, that was before pandemic. Mm -hmm. the pandemic hit America. I mean, it hit in China already. because But it hit America is in March. So two months before, I didn't know why Jesus, you fast a day, a meal. Sometimes I fast two meals. Sometimes I fast three meals a day. You know. But anyway, mostly uh, one meal a day. I fasted for two years and a half. You look at me. I wasn't like this. I was much bigger. <laughs> I, lost like, I lost like, I don't know, uh, 20 pounds. Wow. People, were, people were scared when they looked at me so thin, you know. They were like, hey, you have to stop fasting. You know what? <laughs> Ask me to stop. I said, I cannot stop because Jesus did not ask me to stop. So I fasted. You know, in America, we have so much to eat. I only <laughs> eat 
twice, I mean, two meals a day. You can eat five meals a day, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can I eat many meals? I can eat three, four, five, you know, but from there on, I eat two meals. If it, sometimes I eat one meal. Sometimes I don't eat the whole day. So anyway, there was, you know, it went on, you, you see, with the praying also, not just, you are in the spirit of battle. You are not just praying, but you are fasting too. I never done that in my entire life. We fast and pray, I mean, once in a while, a day or so, you know, on a special occasion. But this has never happened. It went on for two years and a half until oh, wow. it entered like uh, 2020 May. So it was like two years, almost three and a half, fasting nonstop. Almost wow. eight, I remember fasting. Not, you know, you fast, you know, like you mentioned, you know, the call for 30 days fasting, you know, with just water. I never done that. You know, God had, had had other plan. He asked me to go on longer. So yes. this is going to be a long revival. You need to have a long, long, long fasting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I had the, the sign on and during winter time, I said, Jesus, okay, I have I have a question. Do I go out of winter? You know, here at winter, you know, normally it's above zero, but it's still very close. Sometimes it went down to zero, you know, and then I for me, when I went out, I walk, I don't just go out five minutes and come back. I walk for at least one hour. Sometimes it can be longer. One kind of when you are out there one hour under the zero condition, it's not fun. I mean, no. I'm tired outside, you know. <laughs> you see, with all my you know fasting and all day, I was so I mean, I have to wear like four to five shirts, you know, just to keep to keep warm, you know. Mm -hmm. So I asked Jesus, I said, okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do I go out? On winter time, I didn't hear anything. I said he was like silent. Yeah, okay, well, so, okay, you are silent. Let me get, make a deal with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I talked to Jesus. I said, okay, let me make a deal. Okay, I will check the weather. If it is below zero, then I don't go out. All right, okay. If it's above zero, then I think I can stand. You know, I can go a little bit close. But if it's above zero, but the wind chill say below zero, then I won't go out. This are like <laughs> my, my deal with Jesus. I didn't hear anything. I have to. You know, I don't want to go out every day, you know, on the winter time, you know, it's not fun, you know, it's so cold, you know, so, and then I think about, I don't know, a few weeks later, someone, well, he's, he, he's been seeing me here carrying the sign, because when I got carrying the sign on the street, I, because so, so cold, I always like this, I was so cold, you know, I was like, I put it in my pocket, I didn't have the gloves, I was like, you know, I put it in my pocket here. So that guy, that person, I met him some way. He knew me, but I didn't know. I didn't quite know him. He stopped me while I was still uh, carrying the sign. He, he, hey, ho! Oh, it's something. I, I I said, what's what? What do you want? What what do you want me to do? He approached. You know, he approached me, and then he gave me two glows, big one, hmm. glows. And I got it. I so I was so thankful. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I need that. Yeah, I need that. I need the glows. Yeah, yeah. You are right. I need the glow. I'm so cold. But I don't know, maybe a, 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 two weeks later or so, I don't know, I don't know. And then uh, the Holy Spirit or Jesus spoke to me. He said, you know what? I know you're cold, but I sent someone to give you the gloves. So keep going, keep going. <laughs> 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 he says, <"Is> fun? <laughs> wow, I mean, he's so faithful. I mean, yeah, he's faithful. He said, okay, you, I know I know you're cold. I know, but you had to, you can't stop. You know, so that's why I asked that man to <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, so I, okay, I got you. So I have to obey, you know. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So while, while you were in this prayer process over this whole time, you mm -hmm. know, I, I know that with, with the pandemic, everybody, everybody kind of went underground, so to, so to speak. Yes. And, and uh, it was required. It was required that we do it. And I, I think it's so fascinating that uh, according to that Bob Jones prophecy about when when the Kansas City Chiefs would win the Super Bowl, that this mighty revival would break out and the Kansas City Chiefs won in 2020. Mm -hmm. But that was that was when this whole pandemic hit mm -hmm. and everybody basically had to shut down. But mm -hmm. I believe that God sent people into their prayer closets. Yeah. And and I, I love the fact that you were carrying around a sign that said the third great awakening is here. Yes, you were you were making that statement. It was it was here. It you know, right. and right. then and then God sent the Kansas City Chiefs to have the a, a second 
shot at the Super Bowl, then they won it again. And, you know, three days or four days before that even happened, it broke out at Asbury. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yes. So so it was like it was like it was already prayed through for. Right. And I know that God used you and I know that you probably don't have because I, I sense the humility in, in your in your uh, character. But I I feel like you are aware that there were others that were praying as well. Yes. It, but you had an assignment, too. Right, right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like I said earlier that I was in a way, I wouldn't say skeptical. I, w- I just want to have like confirmation. Mm-hmm. And, I, mm-hmm. and when I heard about people's testimony, so I went and interviewed them. Like there are like three, uh, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 people, you know, I, you know, in this period of time that I, I you know, I, they, they, they say about the revival is coming to Wilmore, this place, Asbury, Asbury here, this place. So for me, it's very convincing. I, I heard about, you know, so many stories, convi- I mean, uh, convictions, dreams, and visions. I mean, like two, two years or two or three years ago, even one of the seminary, we were praying in the, in the chapel. He saw a vision. He said, the dam is cracking. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> the dam is cracking. Yeah. yeah. There was a seminary who was on the chair wheel. I mean, he... He didn't speak very well, and it's like kind of, hard, it's kind of hard to hear him. Sometimes for me, at least, you know, because I'm not I'm, I'm American, I, my English is not that good. So anyway, he said the dam is cracking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I mean, there's. So, I mean, even during last week, someone came to me. You know what? Someone he heard, said someone in fact prayed for revival thirty three years ago. Yeah. After that's 1970, you know, when you have revival, you still want it. Hey, come on, we want you to go on, you know. So that person started to pray for revival mm-hmm. 53 years ago. So in this long history of, you know, decades, 53 years, God has given so many, so many people the prayer. I heard so many, so I pray for this. I heard a vision, a dream 30 years ago. I have a dream 30, 20 years ago. You know, I have a conviction. Even I, a couple came to to give up his high paid job just to move to Belmore, to stay here, to wait for revival. Wow. Uh, yeah, so many, so many stories. Wow. So many stories. So maybe I want I may be like the last few of you know the last push. You know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> I mean yeah like you have to this this much of prayer. I mean people have been praying for I mean like it's all like filled up like we always say use hundred percent and it's like before I came to the to the scene, it was never like ninety percent already being filled up. I'm Beautiful. like the last ten percent, and uh, so it's this how this how it is, you know. So so I'm the last one that God wants you me to 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 hit. You know, you have to spend full time. You have to bring the sign. You know, for two years. If you don't believe it. What can I say? So you, you mean so, so so many critics in the in the internet. So oh, is it, you know they try to explain. Oh, is it a revival is it outpouring? I really don't have time to answer them. I say I'm here twenty two two year and a half, two year and eighteen months. You think I'm crazy? Here's praying for me. And they ask me, it's not a revival. I don't know what to say to you. And I have been carrying the sign for two years. You ask, you come and ask the real more people. They will tell you. I will say many of them will tell you this is revival period. <laughs> Absolutely, so I'm, it I'm is. like the last, you know, ten percent. I'm like giving the last push. You know what there I mean? Beautiful. Yeah, it's like hundred like percent. I mean, I mean, I, I, I didn't come to the scene until seven years ago. I didn't think about revival here. Yeah, you know, people thought about revival back ten years ago, twenty years ago, even fifty-three years ago. So it was a long time. I was like, so God asked me to bring a guy, a, a guy who is again the dream. I want him. I was humble. I have to struggle with the dream for like you know. A year or so, you know, to look up because I God asked me not to go. I, you know, when you receive the uh, spirit or uh, prayer, you like to go to charismatic Pentecostal churches. You don't, you know, tradition mm-hmm. build it. But God said, "Don't go. Stay here. <laughs> stay with right. them. You know, I have to. You know, when I say with them, I share the dream. In fact, I said that the dream they will come to uh, Asbury here on my Malaysian Bible Seminary, uh, the qu- quarterly, I think quarterly bulletin." And I shared it. They asked me to share it, but I have to get the approval from my president because the president was conservative. I, I somehow he agreed. He said it's your own opinion. I believe you. You are your spirit is true. So I, I wrote it like three or six years ago in my 
conservative bulletin already. You can go and check it. You know, it was there in China. I think in Chinese, yeah. So God asked me not to leave the, uh, my circle. I'm still with the conservative uh, evangelical or, or over the last 35 years. I didn't leave. I, I, my good friends are all evangelical, you know, uh, 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 conservative. So at the end, God is uh, convinced, you know, bring this guy out of the other camp, you know. He didn't believe he preached against him. I'm going to humble him, you know. He's <laughs> going to struggle with it. He's going to be sneered by people even when they talk about dream. You know, in the past, you know, professor, you taught you told us like last year that you were against the dream, but now you are talking the dream. What's going on? I was yeah. like, you know what I mean? You slap on the face. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what's going on? I, I mean, how can I be trusted? You know, now you told us that uh, you told us that, and now you told the other the other way around. And then what? Am I going to believe in you next time? Maybe you are going to change <laughs> next year. So you have to, you know, you have to struggle with that, you know. But I don't care. I said, okay, okay, I'm changed. I, I, for, I ask God for, for forgiveness. I know God still speaks dream, but not every dream, you know. You dream every day, but you have to discern the dream whether it's from God, you know. Certainly. So yeah, yeah. So it just, you know, it, I'm like the the last. I would say a few pieces where God. I mean, thousand piece. I mean, it's all almost there already. Now only a few last piece. A few pieces. And then I'm going to bring you out this guy from Malaysia Bible Seminary. <laughs> the guy who don't believe in dream. I'm going to give you a dream. I'm going to stir him and let him struggle and let him, you know, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not easy, but God is good. I, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to push, you know, yeah. That's so beautiful. You know, what, what you're saying reminds me of something that I've heard Bobby Connor say that he heard the Lord say. The Lord said, I finally found me people weak enough to work in. And mm -hmm. he said, not weak in morals, not weak in ethics, not mm -hmm. weak in character, weak mm -hmm. in their own ability. He said, I have found me a group of people that's embraced John 15, 5. Without mm -hmm. me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, and right. then, of course, Philippians 4.13 says, but I can do all things through Christ who infuses me with inner strength. Right, right. Hallelujah. So I, I feel like that describes what God has done in your life, taking you from a place where you, where you stood against what you are now operating in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the same thing happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. They had no idea what was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But Jesus told them to stick around in Jerusalem, Terry here, stay right. put until you be endued with power from on high. And right. that's what happened. So tell tell me what what tell us what happened when you came back to Asbury. You got word go, God sent you to New York to work with the homeless, right. and you've been there for a while. Right. Uh, but then you heard about the the breaking out of this this move of God that you were praying for. Tell me what what you thought. Tell us what you thought. Tell tell us what you felt, and what did you do? Yeah, I uh, during the pandemic, I, uh, it's 2020 uh, October where I, you know, I received v It's a it's not a vision. It's like conviction. There's something is going to break out in our prayer room, as very prayer room. The student, you know, the student are praying for revival. They are like, you know, the student whether we will come. We, we don't have like five, six, or seven. But when we pray, we will rock the building. You, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, I'm telling you, you you don't need have thousand people five of us will rock the building you can you know you know oh, the, yeah. the passion that we have for revival well i i got so one of the students uh, uh got a vision from god to to buy a bus uh, to, for the homeless and i i confirmed that because god spoke to me one week before about this so i, I this is how i get into the uh, uh, homeless ministry i never thought about it it just came asked me jesus go to the homeless i said what Homeless ministry, I never experienced and I never, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, 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 I don't have experience in, in homeless ministry. It's zero, zero. I don't experience that. I don't have ministry. Zero plus zero is equal to zero, right? But Jesus <laughs> said, whether you are ready or not, it doesn't matter. So long yeah. as you're ready, you just follow. Okay, good. I follow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, yeah. and then in 2022, we have been doing that for a year and a half, you know. Uh, in in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So uh, 2022, Jesus called me. He said, "Hey, you have to go to New York." I said, "Oh, New York, okay. New York for homeless." I said, "Oh, okay." I thought I was going to stay here until I decided to stay until 2023. This is where the Centennial 
uh, celebration at the seminary. So I will stay until, because while you are praying for revival, you have to check and check. I say, I'm not going to stay longer. You know, you don't see it. I'm going to stay. How long I'm going to stay in this place for revival? It's like chasing the wind. You know, mm -hmm. after, after half a year, I always tell my wife, oh, okay, we'll push for another half. I will see, okay, no revival. Are we going to stay? You know, you know, it is always a struggle. People don't understand me that I have to, I have, I have to struggle that, you know. They saw me, you know, yeah, walking around, but the struggle is me. They didn't see it. I told my wife, we are, we are, I'm chasing the wind. You, you, <laughs> you may try to, you see, you might get it, but it's like, it blew away. Where is it? Where is it? No. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Jesus called me to New York City. So I, I, you know, we were here for almost three years and my wife is settling down. You know, she likes the community here and people are so nice. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to to tell her that she has to go with me to New York City. But anyway, oh, wow. very good. I mean, she always obey hundred percent. You know, she is a good follower, <laughs> a good helper. So we went to New York, and then God had me connected to the New York City uh, homeless. So we went uh, uh, last year August, and then we, I was into it. You know, I was I know it's a call from Jesus. I will spend full time and just while at the same time we still praying for revival. Not as much as I pray because I was there, but now I'm focusing on homeless in New York City. So we pray, and then you know the the end of uh, this last year, I got news from my family that my mother was hospitalized in coma. So I was oh I have to go back to Malaysia. So I went back uh, uh, January first. Uh, uh, so this year we went back for like uh, four weeks, and then uh, well my my mother passed away. I mean she uh, she is a good Christian. And uh, we spent ten days in uh, in uh, uh, in Hong Kong. Then we came, you know, we came. We stay until uh, February seven, because the the sixth was my uh, uh, my wife' birthday, uh, February the sixth. So I we decided to stay uh, uh, after her birthday, because she hasn't been. She she came to America in nineteen ninety, and then she hasn't been back in his country. I mean, his in Hong Kong. For the last mm -hmm. 30 some years so she hasn't celebrated her birthday <clears throat> so we decided to stay mm -hmm. until uh, after the six so we went back to new york on the seven i was oh, wow. in, you know i was like oh next, next day you know was i wasn't gonna work I, I am going to get on the homeless ministry so i went in in the morning i went out of my building on february the 8th that was the first time in my entire life i see i look up the sky i mean it was still the sky shining you know and i don't know i would say it's a vision it's like fresh i look at the street it was like being washed by rain water like look new york city's street is you know if you've been doing you know it's you know trash everywhere sometimes <laughs> my, my area i see trash i had to pick up trash you know sometimes you know? anyway i was like wow it's like the things are everybody look you know it's the same but for me it's like it's like it's like a vision it's like it's like fr fresh you know, I say something is going to good is going to happen, but hmm. I did because I was I was a rush to go to a homeless ministry in Flushing. So at ten o'clock they will start. They will have copy fellowship at then eleven. I went in normally. I will greet the homeless people. You know, you know, I you know I haven't seen them for for uh, six weeks already. So I was kind of missing them. I said, oh, okay, hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? So to see, connect with all these homeless people and i walk around normally i walk around and pray and you know, ask god to show something you know and i look at all the faces of the homeless that day was everybody was well, like now cast you know the face is like, the, the the whole situation like gloomy in the room I, it was like about close to 11 in the morning i look at them i said god Oh, I mean, I love doing that. I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I enjoy it. I love with them. You know, I come in my mouth. If there is no revival, there is no hope. And then without me knowing it, every chapel start from 10 and, uh, clo and they all closed normally before 11 and revival broke up. Wow. You see the timing mm. that I was like, yeah. what was like seeing if there's no revival, there is no hope. I don't know why, you know, it just somehow, I went home that day, I was, you know, I told my wife about the experience. I, I saw it, the, the, like, like a vision, it's so bright and so fresh. It's like, good thing is gonna happen. But I went there, I was like, you know, discouraged and, you know, 
But when I look at uh, my WhatsApp, you know, the WhatsApp group, Esprit Prayer Group, and I started to notice, hey, wait a minute. So, hey, Esprit University, the, 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 the chapel has not ended. Well, like, well, not, <laughs> what? Oh, people just coming in, you know, uh, hundreds now. They are there worshiping, repenting, you know. I was like, oh. I, I, I was sensing that something is going on. I said, well, in a way, I'm happy to hear that. You know, I'm happy to hear that. And uh, I don't know, maybe around six or seven, I I, I was like praying in today. Oh, well, should I go back? And, you know, you are like torn in between. You know, I, well, I'm i away for like six weeks. You know, I I just love the homeless ministry. And I just, the next day I was into it. I didn't even care about my jet, you know, leg jet. I mean, jet leg, whatever you call it. I like, you know, the time is upside down, you know, Malaysian, US. <laughs> yes. Yeah, upside down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, I, I do have time to really think about where am I now? I'm getting into the ministry. But now I heard about it. I was like, wait a minute, what was going on? So I was thinking about that. And my son called me, uh, a younger son in, in Louisiana. He's doing his master there. So he's the alumni of uh, SBA University. So he also heard about from the from the news on the uh, the uh, SB uh, website. He said, "Dad, you heard about uh, the student going on uh, worshiping? You know, and even until now, yeah, I heard about it. I heard about it. And then we, we, we spoke, and he said, Dad, you should go. You should go. <laughs> okay, okay, because he, he knew that I was there just for the revival. So, Dad, you should go. I said, okay. So I was like, okay, I think about it. You know." I'll pray about it. And then later I ask God for a sign. I said, God, you give me one sign. Okay. But my my son encouragement was wasn't that strong. You know what <laughs> happened? I'm telling you, this is I mean it's a miracle. I have like four thousand uh, friends in Facebook. Facebook is my main uh, social media. So I connect with people through Facebook. I because other I said them not much, but Facebook. So I suddenly, and I look at the Facebook, and I check, and there was a group, I mean, Asbury uh, Seminary uh, Formation, I think a formation group, I couldn't, I couldn't call. There's a group where I'm part of it. I normally, I share my experience. Uh, you know, I share my experience. I received the Holy Spirit of, five, I mean, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit or Spirit of Prayer about seven years ago. I wrote that long article. I posted it over there in, in, the, in, the, in the page. And somehow it just appeared to me on the screen. Hmm. So I kick into it. So I read and the whole, you know, I read the whole thing. I read the whole thing because I kick and I, okay. Oh, that was seven years ago. I read it. And wow, I was encouraged to hear, to, to see. And then after I finished reading it, the Holy Spirit to me, hey, you received this personally seven years ago. I said, <sighs> yeah, I received it. Yeah, now you are. You, are, you should go. You should go to uh, this is what you will experience. Now it's happening there. You should go. Okay. So I told my wife and my daughter, I'm going to tomorrow. I'm checking. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's my, or to be honest uh, to with you, you know, my, my wife just came from Hong Kong the next day. And then my, my daughter, you know, she has some issue that I have to help her. You know, I'm kind of like, you know, it's not, it's hard for me to live. So I have to, I have to talk to them and arrange the time because suddenly you have to do it tomorrow. I mean, everything planned, you have to reschedule. So I uh, I told them I'm going there. So I tried to uh, book the late fight so that I can do it the whole day. I can do something for them before I left. So I left uh, the whole night. You know what? When I check back, the, you know, when I look at the page, the, the, the one I described, it was very strange. I look it up, you know, how can I, why it appear? This article I shared seven years ago. So I look at the page. It's open page. Everyone can share, right? Interestingly, I look at the page and they, I was like the second one that I can see because the first one, I uh, recently there's one post. And then, then mine, I was like, wait a minute. Why come all these seven years, nobody posting? I mean, it's not true. You know, Somehow God did a miracle there so that I, he's like, get it out. So it was like, I don't care because I don't care about that. You know, I was really surprised why this is happening. You know, over seven years, nobody posts. Okay. So I read it and then later I go and check, run to double check and, and check uh, my post. I checked the, the page already. I can't find it. And all <gasps> people posting. I see all other people. I said, wait a minute, where is it go? How come <laughs> now? I see all those posting. 
Hmm. <laughs> I can't find. I mean, seven years posting, you cannot. You have to scroll down and down, down and down. I don't know down how long. I don't know. God want me to see it, check it. You know, I have like four thousand people here posting. I didn't normally. I don't go and check who's. It just appear. Then you, you read, right? Because it was me. Then I read. Normally, I don't read so many. You don't have time to read. You know. But it was me. Then I. <laughs> So there was a confirmation. You have to go. You have to go. So you see all this. You know all. It's just perfect timing. And my wife say, if that happen in January, I will be. A, there will be a bit struggle. I cannot come. Mm. But when we arrived in New York, it was seven of February uh, uh, night, and the next day it broke out. And my wife, wow. timing was perfect. Wow. God has to wait until I came back, so that you will break out. Wow. He is so you kind and faithful. You know, if you break out last month, I won't. I will not come back because I was still grieving with my 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 passing of my mother. I wasn't feeling good. I it was I was down for like two two or two weeks or two or three weeks. Didn't feel like doing anything. You know, when you my my mother was dear to me. You know, it was so dear to me. I, but he was. I mean, she was uh, like eighty plus already. But still, you just. You know, my mother. I'm going to write a, a you know memo of my mother. I, I, so anyway, so there was a perfect timing. You know, it happened last month. I won't come back. I was back in Malaysia, still grieving my mother. How would I come back here? And hmm, oh, wow. here, because he want me to document this, but revise. This is why I stay until now. I was here a couple of days, and uh, I told Jesus, I said, "What do you, what do you want me to do here?" When I booked the ticket, I booked for ten days. I will come here for ten days. But when I came, <laughs> you know what? Someone give it a, a free card, a airline free card for like one hundred fifty. As it said, God spoke to me. I feel you a free, a free airline, a, a, the card free card for the airline Southwest. I think that yeah. So she 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 gave it to me. The first the first the person I know from Facebook. I didn't know her. I mean I mean personally, you know, just a wow. Facebook. Yeah. So she gave it to me. So I pray into that. I say, okay, how long are you going to stay? I'm going to stay for ten days. No, you don't stay for ten days. You stay a lot about you know as long as I want you to. So yes, <laughs> you schedule it. I provide you with someone with a. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. So you are the one. I want you to document this. Why I stay here and I came here. I enjoy my life. And I Jesus asked me stay low key, stay low key. You know, stay low key. So for the ten days or twelve, I haven't gone up to the state to testify in the in the auditorium. I mean, I'm the one who like to say, you know, they have testimony every day, like during the day, during the night. I could have gone up, you know, there, but Jesus said, no, no, you stay, you just sit there, relax and pray and see what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so I'm going around, you know, people ask me, why are you walking around? I just pray, you know. Jesus asked me to just relax and pray, enjoy. The fruits of your labor. Yeah. Isn't beautiful. That <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yes, amen. Jesus. So you're documenting what's going on. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing and hearing that you prayed for. Well, it's more than what I pray for. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> much, much more. Because beyond what you could ask or think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I saw the dream, it wasn't that like also the people it wasn't that that many i i can you know there are people you know when when you are crying for god you don't need to have 10000 people you have like a field it will blow i mean it will blow you away so it wasn't <laughs> it was more than way more than i can <laughs> so right now i just feel it you know that it's spreading all over i'm here i i think people ask me how do you feel i will reply no word can describe what I yeah. can say, I just mm. when I use the word, I would have to say extremely, 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 extremely joyful. Even that, that you know, I have to, I have to repeat a few times. Even that just can describe. You know what I mean? When you are in that the eternity, you know, when you are like in the realm, the words. You, I mean, like Paul went up into heaven. You know, when he came down, I mean, he said, "I cannot share with you." What I see, <laughs> I cannot find the words <laughs> on earth the way can, I can describe it. The heavens, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, I mean, I read the, the what the testimony. I witness. I mean, I was there. You know, the first few, the first few days, I was. I can go in and out. You know what I mean? You know, when I go in, I don't want to come out. I went in eight o'clock. 
And then by the time it's four o'clock, I said, four o'clock already? I was going to stay longer, but I have to go out and pick up, you know, I don't know, I can't remember somebody from ever airport. Well, anyway, when, you, when you're in that room, everybody's like, you don't want to come out. That's why people don't, you know, the lines, the lines, so people, they cannot chase people out, you know. If someone, <laughs> if I go out and if I go in, <laughs> you're always full. <laughs> it's the whole day like this, you know. So people repenting, you don't have to like call them, hey, you want to go down and pray? Normally you don't do. People just keep coming to the altar and they pray for. You see the tissue are not enough. They, you know, people giving tissue and the lies. They are, they are like experience physical physical healing. I heard about a tumor as big as like a cherry. You know, pray and it was gone. You know, they, they they didn't ask you to pray for this. You know, it's the interesting. They go down. They ask, what's the what's the problem? Oh, I got this. And then pray and then got healed. You know, and then I would say physically, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, or even you know, spiritually, whatever. You know, I don't know hundred or thousand testimony. And the line was, you know, on Sunday, people have to shut off the state, the state, Kentucky state troopers. I mean, the, the state government has to take over the situation. They were like, I don't know, they say 20,000 flocked into Wilmore. Oh, you know, wow. <laughs> them everywhere. And they have to put a sign, say, called Revival Overflow. <laughs> so you cannot go in. The, the people, the police stop people from going to the town. Only the resident can go in. <laughs> it's, wow. On Sunday, it was just wow. like, oh man, the whole day was like people on the street. The whole wow. day. Wow. Wow. And I, I, I'm telling you, I and mean, then you there are two days are a bit cold, but the rest are the temperature are very good. Two days, one day raining, the whole day raining. People still lying up earlier. Raining. It was like in, in, in zero. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah we were there too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And my friend flew from California. He, he he waited for six hours to get in. Oh my! In the call, and then he said, "When you wait for six hours in the call to get in, how 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 long are you going to go out? You don't go out in one hour, right?" He will spend there like I don't know, eight or six or eight hours just right to be there. That's why people have to get out. You know, I said sometimes, "Hey, come on, you have to get out. Let people go in." <laughs> wow! But on the lawn, there were thousands worshiping. You know, they put wow. up two big screen. Oh, you, you just, you, I mean, there were more people who said, no, what's going on? You know, amazing. <laughs> well, we mean, got in just in time. I'm here 13 days already. I'm just, I, I, it's just blown. I would say explosion, nuclear type explosion of the Holy Spirit. Nuclear <laughs> type, boom. <laughs> you nuclear. can feel it, you know, everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. You have wow. to be here. I'm here. I don't want to go home. <laughs> anyway, we didn't want to go home either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So let me just recap just a little bit. So you started out coming there to Asbury on a sabbatical, and then you had a dream. Then God spoke to you to come there, and you came there. And you for two years, you carried signs. I'm just going to read some of these signs. Repent, believe in Jesus, for the kingdom of God is near. King Jesus is the savior of your of your sins. King Jesus is coming for you and me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Third great awakening is here. I, that's yeah. that's my favorite one. That's my favorite one. You were doing this during the pandemic. Hallelujah. Yeah. Will more awakening revival. King Jesus dies for your sins. These were words that you carried. You know, I I, I know that that the power of the spoken word is what brought. Uh, the earth into being. God said, "Let there be light." God said, "God said, God said." But when you when you write down what God said, mm -hmm. you know Jesus when he was dealing with the devil, he said, "It is written." Yeah. And the fact that you carried "It is written," uh, I, I think that there there's something about punching through that last ten percent that you were talking about. <laughs> that that those signs really made a difference in that. And then God took you away so that you wouldn't be there when it broke out but then he brought you back you're chron chronicling it you're documenting it and now you've you've said that this move is what's going on at asbury is the epicenter mm -hmm. can you just give us a little bit of of what you're seeing is going forward from this because um uh, let, let me just also refer to uh the the prophecy that 
Arthur Burt carried around in his pocket from 1934. He carried it out and, and Bob Jones gave a word to him that tell that man that's carrying this thing around in his pocket. Kathy Walters gave the message through to Arthur Burt. Tell that man that he's going to see what the word is that he's carried around in his pocket. And he passed away a few years ago at the age of 102, 104, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And, and here's the word. It shall come as a breath. And the breath shall bring the wind and the wind shall bring the rain and there shall be floods and floods and floods and torrents and torrents and torrents. Souls shall be saved like falling leaves from mighty oaks swept by a hurricane. Arms and legs will come down from heaven and there shall be no ebb. Yeah. Every other revival in history has come in as a wave. It may last for days or weeks or months or two, three years, and then it recedes. But lives, lives are changed, and those people that received that revival go on in the power of what they received. But then they see that, you know, it's we got to pray through for another one. And and that's that's the way it has been, I think, all through church history. history yeah. that, that you got to pray for revival. You got to pray for uh, for a fresh a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit. But this one, as, as this wave comes in, it's not going to ebb out. It is this, that. How do you feel about that? Is this going to be one of those that, that the wave comes in and then it goes back out again? Or is this the one where there shall be no ebb? Yeah, because I, I teach the book of Revelation over the last four years and uh, what I see, uh, the ho the uh, revelation is a GPS. Mm. Uh, GPS. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter one has been fulfilled. Uh, That's what I saw, and it's confirmed. Chapter two and three is uh, all seven churches are house churches, and then chapter four and five are the revival, end time revival, and chapter six is the opening of the seal. So before the opening of the seal is, I mean, there's a tribulation, you know, persecution, you know, all the, you, you, if you read that, you know, you don't want to go through that. So that, that's what we need, chapter four and five, where this will be, uh, it's a world revival. You know, we have to prepare the church to be strong enough to go through the tribulation in chapter six and seven and even more down the road. So that's what I see. Not just a uh, uh, vision, but also with the uh, affirmation of God's word, and uh, so this is. Uh, I felt this one is. A, it will be a long, long, long revival. So oh, it will. Amen. Be, yeah, yeah. This is the one, according to the book of Revelation. It was in my heart that God was speaking to me. Once you receive the revival, it will be like COVID. You will get it sooner or later. The whole world will get it. <laughs> <laughs> Like COVID. I you thought know, that the other day. It's just like this is it was COVID. contagious, <laughs> like it's whole this Holy Spirit contagious, you know. Yes. Yeah, contagious. It's very you, you get it sooner or later. Of course, you I want to get it right now. <laughs> yeah, that's why we see my spirit. Say, you know, tell the world it's going to be like COVID. You know, you'll get it in your country sooner or later. That's it. And they will refer this to the uh Asbury revival. This is the uh, third great awakening. This this is pandemic. I, I mean, this is COVID pandemic. <laughs> so it's going to go on. Uh, pandemic, inter COVID is not over yet. You know what I mean? It's still mm -hmm. going on. You have to live with it. So we have to live uh, a, a normal life with the revival still going on. That's what this, this time around, God has given President Kevin Brown, the, the UNC president there. So there's a struggle whether you want to close down the school for the sake of the revival. That's what they did in the 1970. They closed out the whole week, you know. But this time around, they said no, school will go on. You know, it's you know for them, it's for the last week it was too too tough for them, you know, because you know, they have to go and manage the school every day. At the same time, in it, you know, not entertaining or uh, serving thousands of people coming to their campus. For the last four, <laughs> thousand, couple of thousand, you know, uh, to serve them. So you know the struggle. So he, he, I think what God has given them that let revival go on and your life, your, you are dealing, you live with the revival. It's like we, we live with the virus. You don't shut down the school, you don't close down the company, you just cl close country. No, no, no. You live with the revival. I mean, you know, with the COVID, right? 
So right now it's like we are living in a time where you're not, you will go on your normal life, but still the revival is going on. So when the revival is going on, then the, the reviewer know that they, they, to be, they need to be testimony. So I don't know if you heard about seven mountains. Yeah, the yeah. all over these seven mountains, they, they, will, they, will, they will show that Jesus is Lord and Savior. So with the book of Revelation, you know, the, the, the word of God that, that confirmed chapter four and five. So we are now, it's like uh, the warm up of chapter four and five. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's going to go on. Don't worry about praying for another one. This is the one. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. And not just me. In fact, there are a few, like one of my good friends, uh, Steve Siemens, I don't even know him here. Uh, he was a professor in seminary. He experienced the revival uh, uh, in uh, 1970, where he was a senior. You know, you know, now, this was the second time here in Asbury. So he mentioned also, he, he shared that this will be also the epic center, epic yeah. center. The revival so every revival that comes along in 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 next few weeks next few months next few years they will say it has to do with asbury yeah. and pray for me pray for me i'm still struggling now i'm new york i'm loving my ministry but when i came the first two days jesus was like hey you have unfinished task here mm. say, what i always say what <laughs> <laughs> Unfinished task here i said what am i coming i'm moving back here i just moved over there you coming to come here you know, it's like it's so fun moving around. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know what? I, I didn't. There's one thing that God is good to me. I I, I didn't say that. I, I just add to that. You know, when I planning to move to New York City, I was praying to that. I said, Jesus, I I you know I we we decided to stay until uh, next year. I mean, uh, 2023. Uh, uh, there was a year ago. So I said, Why? I will finish. I don't mind spend another year to to pray. But you, why, why do you send me to New York? I mean, I don't, I don't, I like, I like homeless ministry, whatever you send me. And then you know what Jesus told me? He said, I have to take you away. He said, why? Because when the revival happened while you are here, you will be very proudful. Mm -hmm. And you will take credit for that. So I have to take you out before I send revival. Mm -hmm. so, you know, my wife said, like, hey, you came here for pray for revival. Right? It didn't happen. Now we are living. You know, I told my wife, you know, God is good to me. He, he said, the revival won't come until I left. So it happened six months later, eight months later. Wow. wow. So, wow. So, so he knew that I would take credit for that. <laughs> you, know, yeah, yeah, you are here. You came here to sign for two years. You're you praying. You're you fasting. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are the superstar. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He said, you know, that I, you know, we human being, you know, we are so weak. Yeah. <laughs> Give the flesh. He knew me. He, 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 I saw that you don't take, take credit for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So I, you know, with that confirmation from Jesus, so we left happily. So we are, while we are serving in New York, we are still waiting, see what, and the timing, like I say, was perfect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, when when I heard that word epicenter, mm. it reminded me of, you know, usually the time that you hear the word epicenter, it's when it's talking about an earthquake. earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. And I've I felt <laughs> like, you know, we we know the scripture in in Hebrews that talks about everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken will remain. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, revival does a lot for shaking the flesh life off of us. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit moves and when the glory is released, mm -hmm. there's a there's a, a, a transformation that takes place in our lives. And 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 we go from glory to glory and glory to glory. But I feel like the purpose of the shaking, everything is that can be shaken is being shaken. Mm -hmm. Uh and I see that that. God's purpose in creating an epicenter, uh, um, an earthquake, so, so to speak, in the spirit realm is to shake us free from the flesh life, to shake us free from, from that carnal nature so that we can walk in the spirit and be used in the spirit to, to have this heaven on earth. Uh, lifestyle and and character that that we're we're walking in the character of Christ. We're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, 
So, so that's, that's my heart about, about what he's doing in Asbury, what he's, what he, what he did in Asbury in 70, what in 70, I, I caught it in 71 at, at the age of 13. And, and I know that it, that it came, I know there was some kind of connection with Asbury in that, in that move that, that I, where I caught it. I know there were charismatic Methodists that were involved. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I just know that this flow of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. taking us from glory to glory to glory to glory. And this one just has to uh, hover. I, I'm reminded about how at the very beginning, when the spirit of God brooded over, over the waters of, over the depths in, in Genesis chapter one, that there, there was a, uh, uh, there's a man named Ivan Tuttle that that uh, died and went to heaven, and and he saw how how the spirit of God not only brooded over the water, but he actually went into the water mm -hmm. to prepare it to bring forth life because he's the source of life. And I, I'm just seeing that 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 what he did in the beginning that he's going to do again in these last days to uh, to bring that life of his spirit back to us so mm -hmm. that we can we can be restored to what he originally intended with with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that, we, that Jesus came as as that last Adam to restore us, to restore uh, what he intended so that we could have this heaven on earth. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm hearing them talking about what what the worship is doing in in mm -hmm. Hughes Auditorium, that that they are uh, stewarding this mm -hmm. worship of Jesus on earth as it is in heaven. And I, I just, mm -hmm. I believe that what you said is true, that, that this is going to spread around the world, just like COVID and sooner or later, you're going to catch it. <laughs> that was so beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I want to catch it now yeah. and I want our listeners to catch it now. Would you pray for our listeners? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, I'll pray. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I decree release. Oh, the feeling of the Holy Spirit in full to everyone who listens. But right now, I even decree and release to Sharon and Philip. Oh, God, you are the one who is doing all this. You are the one who is making this happen. All we have to do is yield to the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is obey 100%. Oh God, may your name be glorified. May your church be edified. May your church be built up. Oh, so that in this last day, we'll be strong to stand against the trials or uh, 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 the persecution that we'll be facing. We thank you for outpouring of your Holy Spirit right in Oh, in Hughes Memorial Auditorium at Asbury University. Oh, God, you have met so many people. Life being changed. Oh, now those who are listening in this podcast, I just pray a decree and release. Be filled with the Holy Spirit for God's glory and God's honor and God's power and for the good of his church. In Christ's most powerful name we pray. Amen. 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 If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, this is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence.